Hi, we're here at the uh, Jewish AIDS Federation, something or all that. We're making Project food. Chicken soup. Project Chicken Soup. Even though we're making other things besides chicken soup, okay. we're very excited right here. We're making celery, we're just cutting For it up. Putting it in the pan right pasta here. Pasta Fajoli Soup. Okay. It's very exciting. The menu is exquisite. We have some fine cooks here. We should be getting done soon, about an hour or two. And uh, then we're going to go deliver. So we'll talk, I'll talk to you later when everything's done and this turns into pasta. See you later. <laughs> What the heck is this all about? Yeah. All right. Well, specifically, Project Chicken Soup was created to prepare and deliver kosher food to people with HIV and AIDS. Because kosher food brings back memories of home. And a lot of these people uh, are separated from their loved ones, either by geography or by um, their loved ones, more specifically, might be having problems with them. So it's, it's a comfort food that reminds people of the close and loving family that they may have once had and perhaps don't have now. Or if they do have now, it, it also helps them keep alive that memory. Molly Peer has been volunteering for Project Chicken Soup since its inception. She joined the project after her son died of AIDS back in 1989. I am personally involved with this because I had a wonderful son, the youngest of my three sons, who was one of the first doctors in New York City to treat AIDS. He died around Christmas time in 1989. And uh, I feel that spiritually, it helps me to accept his death and to live with it because somehow I feel that his soul is still alive and that he's proud of me for carrying on the work that he started in a different manner, in a different form. The day begins at 8 a.m. where the team of volunteers prepare the kosher food for approximately 110 clients. Today we're cooking a uh, chicken, chicken and noodle soup. We always do a, a chicken soup, that's uh, our name, Project Chicken Soup, so we always do chicken soup. We always do a second soup, and this time we're doing tomato and rice. Um, we always do a lot of desserts. All, everything's home, handmade, homemade uh, in our kitchen here. Also, we, we do three entrees, and they're not a single entree. Normally, they're, uh, they're a huge entree that can last someone a few days. We serve also um, salads, fruit salads, vegetable salads, cooked vegetables. So um, we give a huge bag full of groceries of cooked food and, and usually once a month we, we send out household products that include soap, shampoo, um, um, canned food. So normally we, we give our clients enough food to last them a, at least a week. Currently we have about um, 65 uh, to 70 households we'll be delivering to today, say for example. Uh, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, people are out of town, um, or sometimes, unfortunately, they're in the hospital or where they, you know, where, where they can't get the food. Um, if they're in some sort of convalescent home, we try to get them the food anyway, or at least to visit them. But what we have is, is a list, and uh, it's organized by areas of the city. We deliver all the way from Long Beach in the south to Claremont in the east to Woodland Hills in the west and all over the, you know, the city. Helping out today are some of Orly's family and their friends. Whilst they help pack the bags, Orly's volunteering in a kitchen. Is this your first time here? Yes, this is my first time here because our temple off, uh, has, a, it's called Mitzvah Day today and it means Good Works Day and they have about 55 places in the city here in Los Angeles where you can volunteer and do good deeds. So we chose 
this place today and I brought my family and, and some good friends. So you guys know what you're doing here today? Yeah, we're packing 92 bags. Wow. Yeah. With so much work to do, I wanted to know what drove people to give up their spare time on a Sunday morning. It's the people you meet, it's, it's, it's fun working you know, with the food, um, I enjoy cooking, but it is also the satisfaction of knowing that you're doing something, um, to do something a little bit bigger than, than just yourself. Um, there's a very important concept in Judaism of Bikur Cholim, which means visiting the sick and helping the sick, um, and this is a definite way of doing that. I feel good about myself that I've helped the community in some way, and, and I just hope that the people who are going to be enjoying this meal are going to be, you know, feeling that they're not alone and there are people who can help. As the organization is purely voluntary and is a free service to its clients, I asked how the project was funded. Now, Project Chicken Soup relies solely on individual donations and the donations of some small foundations. Uh, so we usually ha actually patch the hat when uh, we have a cooking. We didn't get around to it today because we were in a rush. But uh, we received no money from the Jewish Federation or any other government or quasi-government group or any large charity like United Way. We're totally self-funded. Uh, that means from donations of our individual members, people that come to cook, um, and as I said before, some small foundations. All our food, all is donated, either by financial donations or by um, our meat is donated by Pico Foods and we uh, buy our produce from the uh, classic produce across the street and, we, okay. and each, uh, each month we, um, we give our clients uh, a bouquet of flowers and that's donated by Luke Cohen of Flower Works. So the community really pitches in to help us out. You get so much more out of it than you put into it. It's, it sounds like a cliche, but it's really true. The experience of being with people, of doing the work, of the satisfaction of getting it done, and just knowing that you're helping is extremely rewarding. It's gratifying to know that I'm doing something good for somebody else. The people have been around here for me when I needed them in my younger days. And it's nice to know that I can give something back. We would hope that in time to come, there's no longer be a need for this service, but of course that's, that's a dream.